In this video, we will create the first two components of our application. So let's return to ColdFusion Builder. And the first thing that we will do is to create a folder at the root of the application. So I will right click here on the name of my project to create a new folder that I will call components, because this is where I want to store the components of my application. Now I right click on that new folder to create a new ColdFusion component and in this box I provide the name of my new component. This one will be the page service component. I specify output equal false and I click on finish and this creates the component. You see that ColdFusion Builder has created that page service.cfc in the components folder and you also have that cf component tag in the page service.cfc file. All right, now let's go to includes folder to open my functions.cfm because I will copy paste that function inside of my page service component and that makes it a method of my page service component. Now I will save and browse my component and you can see that I can access some documentation about the component. Now you may have to log on as a ColdFusion administrator to reach that page. But here you can see something that is pretty unique to ColdFusion. is the fact that those components are self-documented. You see here the name of the package and the name of the component. So to access that component, you need to go from the web root of ColdFusion inside of the CF training folder then in that folder you have the components folder and that is where you find the page service.cfc file. So the path to that file using the dot notation is cftraining.components.pageService. You also see some information about the component and the methods in the component. You see here that we have one method in the component. It's the get page content method and that method takes one required argument which is the page ID argument and returns a query. By the way, let's return to ColdFusion Builder. I will first change the name of that method to make it a little bit more meaningful, get page by ID. And I can change a few things in that auto-documented component. For example, I can add to the CF component tag a display name attribute. Let's call that the page service component. And I can also add a hint to tell the people what this component is supposed to do. So this component handles various aspects of page management, like that. You can also add a hint attribute to the CF function. So hint this function retrieves one or retrieves a single page from the database based on the unique ID number of the page. And I can also add a hint to the CF argument tag, which is right here. So let's add a hint here. Unique ID number of the page to retrieve. All right, let's save that component and run it. And you see that the documentation has been enhanced by my hints. You see that we have the hint here of the component, the display name attribute, and here the different hints for the CF function and the CF argument tags. Now let's create a second component. So I will do a second right click here on my components folder and I will create another new component. And this one will be the news service component. Oops. News service output is false as well. And instead of clicking on finish, I will now click on next because I can add some more things here. I can directly add some functions to my component. So I will click here on add function and I will add the first function that will be called get latest news. And this function, the access type is public, will return a query. You can choose that in the drop down list. 
Then I click on OK. You see I have one function defined here. I will define a second function which will be the get news years function which has also an access type of public and I click on OK here. I add a third function which is the get news by ID which also is public. It returns also a query. OK. And that function, get news by ID, needs an argument. So I will add an argument that will be the news ID argument, which is a number and it is a required argument. So I click on OK. And now for the last function of that component, it's going to be get news for year. The access type is public. The return type is once again here a query. OK. And it needs also one argument, which is the year argument. That argument is a number and is also required. And when I click now on finish, you see that ColdFusion already generates a lot of code for me. Now, if you made a mistake, if you forget something, there is no way for you to go back into the box. So the box is just a productivity feature to boost your code. Here, for example, I have forgotten the return type equal query for my last function, get news year. So I can add it now manually, but I cannot go back to the box. All right, so now you know enough about creating components to start the next exercise on your own. In the next exercise, you will start by developing the different methods of this new service component. You will also create the other components that we will need in the application. The step-by-step -step instructions are located in the PDF file whose name is now on your screen. And once again, take your time to do this exercise. The best way to get used to those new procedures is to do them by yourself. So take your time to do the exercise and we will meet each other in a few minutes for the next video where we will use the components that you will create in the exercise. A little tip before you get started, when you create a component, don't hesitate to run it in the browser to see if you can access the automatic documentation of the component. Because if you cannot access that automatic documentation, it means you may have a syntax error somewhere. So it's a way to check if your work is correct.